Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the UGC League Test Season Ladder Match. It's a best of two match between Villarito Squad and the Bot Killers. The game will begin, and these two titans of the gridiron are already starting their band phase. You're joining us here in the Dota 2 Killcopter. My hey. name is Brushfire, and as always, I am joined by my cohorts, Jujkin and Technoman. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me this fine day. It's a pleasure to be here at UGC, and it's a pleasure to do their test season. Mmm, indeedy, indeedy. Now, this is a Twitch stream only match, so remember, if you want to communicate with us, make sure you head on over to twitch.tv slash UGC League and talk to us there. We'll talk to you in game, give you a play by play as we go around. First band phase is now done. We're going to see a bye bye to Bad Rider and Invoker over on Bot Killers. Murata pick up for the first pick, and Villarito's gonna ban out themselves a Timber Saw and a Slark, both very, fairly standard bans at this point. No much to worry about right there. Now, uh, what, uh, Jenkins, what are we thinking about that Murata pick up right there very early? Are we gonna be seeing her played as a uh, support? Because typically, if you pick her first, we're gonna see him support Murata. What do you think's going on there? Or roaming. Uh, support's probably a good call. She could be a component of a tri-lane, or it could just be denying Velorito squad so that they can't have her. Um, pretty good pickup with Disruptor. He's a very decent Moronic counter and just an all-around great support right now. Um, also a good initiator if you, uh, can catch somebody who was retreating, so... Time. It's a little it's a little early to be certain as to how they're going to play her. Disruptor getting picked up by Villarito squad. They are gonna dip into their reserve time now to think about their second pick. Disruptor is a great pickup right now. I really love Disruptor. His uh static cage so good. What do you think they're gonna be doing with Disruptor? Well, Disruptor's obviously going to be their their main lane support. They're probably going to pick another one to do their their uh, their jungle control and stacking in the camps and such. But they that um, that's assuming that they're going a uh, defensive tri lane. They're going to pick up a witch doctor here, which gives them a very solid base for either a uh, offensive or defensive tri lane. Uh, very easy to get kills with both of these supports, especially if they pick up a. Uh, a carry that has some kind of slow or a stun. Right you are, Ken. Right you are. Witch Doctor, a fantastic choice. I believe he received a buff more recently in memory. And it's no no there's no reason why we should not see this Witch Doctor excel. Bot killers now up for the pick. This is their second pick. They're gonna dip into their reserve time for the first time this game. Still have plenty of time on the clock though to think about their second pick. Uh, who do you think we're gonna see teamed up with Morana? Personally we're probably gonna see a Bane. Uh, Bane's been that classic Marana uh, team up pick. Do you think we could see something else? Do you think they might try to shake up the formula just a bit? Well, you don't you don't see uh, the Bane Marana combo nearly as much these days. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, uh, Shadow Demon has been the one that's mainly been picked up with her. We'll it's... see an Earthshaker pick up by Bot Killers. Interesting choice right there. Interesting choice. Now. Earthshaker, little uh, little little uh, tell all on my co-host here. Uh, you met John Patrick Laurie at uh, the most hey, recent Magfest in Maryland, and uh, he he did the voice for you, and I believe you that melted sounds. right there on the stage. I did, in fact, melt quite thoroughly. I could not contain my inner nerd just squeed all over the place when I heard that man speak to me. Right, I you got are. a nice autograph from him too. And then we're going to see a Wraith King ban by Bot Killers. Very good. Well, we've got the dedicated stun for a Marana arrow, so this looks like the makings of a very aggressive tri lane. Um, good. I love aggression in a game. Playing it safe is so great, but uh, unless you're you're from the e Asian circuit, really doesn't do much for you. We like aggression here. Yeah. Now first, I don't. I don't honestly see the point in uh, banning the Wraith King. Wraith King's generally seen as a support. 
these days. So it's still they really powerful late leader, game. So it's filled. Yeah, not not against uh, Murano. Yeah, I guess. Murano can build very easily build um diffusal blade. It works quite well on her. And burn out um Wraith King's mana. Ah uh, yes. Could very easily go that way. Villarito dipping deep into their reserve time now. Twenty seconds left on their oh. clock. They will ban out Gyrocopter. It's a real good choice. Gyro is really strong due to the, the little buff he got to his rocket, so an aggressive tri lane with him is just a really good kill lane. And um, that's a really good ban out. Especially when they're basing it on just two heroes thus far. We're going to go into our reserve time yet again for bot killers. Bot killers in a much better spot. They're going to ban out Centaur Warrunner, a spectacular choice right there. Uh, Bot Killer still running this draft their way. They have plenty of time left on the clock versus Villarito Squad, which only has 19 left in their reserve tank. Yes, indeed. Both teams are sort of playing very thoughtfully, and definitely you can see them sort of reading the tea leaves, as it were. Villarito going to ban out Luna. Third pick coming your way. Interesting that they would ban Luna instead of choosing her, but then again, against an Earthshaker Marana Arrow combo, maybe not the best. That early lane farm just getting potentially decimated. We're gonna see. I a definitely agree with this pick here. BB being picked up by Villarito now. Logs, if I'm not mistaken, Bristleback is your signature hero. Is, is he that... is something of a signature hero. I have been known to win a few games, something of a 70-ish percent win rate with the hero. <laughs> that is devastating. We're gonna go to our but, third um, pick now on bot killers. Bristleback is very strong Ten for this. Uh, they're Three. anticipating that uh, bot killers will take um, the Marana Earthshaker and probably pick up another Three. support and go on an aggressive tri-lane. Bristleback's great against address aggressive tri-lanes because of all the AoE damage he can deal out. He's also a good chaser, uh, and Earthshaker is eventually going to have Blink Dagger. Um, Marana won't, but Blink Dagger being such a great item now, mm. a lot of a lot of heroes taking it, maybe third or fourth item. Um, having the Quill Spray to chase or to initiate can be really strong. Dipping in the reserve Honestly, tank once I've, again by I've bot killers. I've seen uh, Bristlebacks pick up Bris um, Blink Dagger before to actually quite good effect. Though I don't think they, um, they'll they do it in this game. Ooh, they're going to go for the Shadow Shaman for their third support pickup. Oh, sorry, as, the second support pickup. As you anticipated there with that, uh, that support pickup, uh, Villarito now probably in a better spot than by killers with the, as far as this draft is going. Mm, not sure about that. It's hard to say. Both of these tri lanes are very good. It's really going to come down to the execution. I think the Shadow Shaman is a preemptive pick against Ursa. Either that, they're going to consider picking Ursa themselves and want to deny him. Honestly, I think the Shadow Shaman is a bit of a weak pick uh, due to um, <laughs> uh, due to the uh, the channeling that is required to do the shackles. It makes him a little weaker in lane. It does, especially against a Naga, because she'll just throw out her net or her song when she hits six and disrupt it, but... Well, it, um, it's not the, the Naga that really he should be worried about. It's just, He should be worried about um, the Witch Doctor's paralyzing cast and um, Glimpse mm -hmm. it just um, interrupting his channel. That's true. There's a, there's a whole lot of uh, interruption available to Villarito. Um, however, if they go Ursa, I still think he would be the good pickup. But they're going to go Slardar instead. 
Final ban phase now. Villarito, I still think Villarito is currently winning this draft. We're going to have to see who they ban out. We're going to have to see who they pick up over on Bot Killers. But right now, Villarito's my, my pick to win this one because their draft is just so strong. Now, big question is where are they putting the Slardar? They can definitely... They, they have really two options with it. They can send it bottom and have it be switch to a defensive tri lane and just have them run off lane. Or they could keep the offensive tri lane and have Slardar go mid and then pick some other sort of safe person to go in the um in the safe lane. Well logs they are gonna ban out uh Brewmaster over on Villarito. I almost called him Bristleback. <laughs> I was looking straight at Bristleback's pick. Villarito is going to get their final pick now after Darkseer gets banned out by Bot Killers. Some really good bans. Uh, Brewmaster has been sort of the, I say this in air quotes, secret favorite uh, that's sort of emerged with the new meta. I don't know. Uh, he's kind of he's the current flavor of the month as it is. Yeah, and uh, he's he's still seen some really great success. Um, his ultimate is just really strong. Uh, Blink Dagger, Ags, all really strong items on him. Honestly, he'd been he'd been quite strong for some time and just hadn't really seen much play. It's true. Faceless what? being picked up by Villarito. That's going to round out their draft. Let's see what Bot Killer can do to counter it. They have 25. No, make that 40 seconds on their clock to think about what they want to do with this. This could be huge. They could have a Naga song into a Chronosphere, and that could be seriously deadly. Um, Earthshaker can't ult if he's dead. Um, Shadow Shaman's wards um, get yeah, frozen in Chronosphere, if I'm not mistaken. We are going to see a sniper pick up, ladies and gentlemen, and that's going to round out your draft phase. We're going to go down to the action in the Dota 2 Killcopter and see what these two teams can do to each other. And no, wards are actually not frozen in Chronosphere. I was wondering if their magic immunity worked on Chronosphere or not. Well, it, it, it doesn't actually have to do with their magic immunity. Um, just sentries, sentry units like um, the uh, his wards, and I believe Venomancer's wards aren't affected by it. We might find out this game. But Ven Velatrilo, sorry, um, Velarito squad has a very good setup here. They have a lot of great AOE team fight. To, they set up with the Naga alt, uh, drop the Chronosphere, and then put both their um, their supports uh, ultimates in there with the the Static Storm and the Death Ward. And we're going to emerge from the long, boring pause into a. Another boring pause. That's all right. We did have a disconnect on Faceless Void. So while they're doing that, let's go over what these two teams can offer each other. Over on the Radiant side, we've got Bot Killers. Das Mig, your team captain, is going to be your sniper, followed by Too Sexy, NP, and Spanky. Probably going to be in that tri lane right there while Slardar goes off on his own, being played by Not So Sexy. What do we have on the dire side, my friend, Juge Cans? Over on V Squad, we have Agitur on the Faceless Void. We've got Fiesta on the Naga Siren, Crytek on the Witch Doctor, uh, Soster Pony on the Bristleback, and Captain Flint on the Disruptor. Right you are, right you are. Let's bring up our last hits, Denies. And let's see if these two teams can get themselves a first blood. Looks like an early, uh, no real early aggression is coming out from these guys. Uh, all of BK just kind of hanging back on the bottom line. The tri lane is going to be Slardar, too sexy, or excuse me, not so sexy, too sexy, and NP on there. Mid, of course, you're going to have Dazmig, who's going to be playing your sniper. And it looks like Marana is going to be hanging on her own, rocking that very nice Marana hair, by the way. I love it. Thank you so much for that. We're going to have a little bit of aggression up in the top. Uh, River Area Disruptor, along with Witch Doctor, Crytek, and Captain Flint. Going to be hanging there for a good ward spot. Captain Flint's probably going to throw up a ward. Uh, Bristleback threw down a ward down here in um the Radiant Jungle, so he's got a little bit of vision he does indeed. on uh, the Radiant's movements once he moves into lane. 
Rune bottom, haste rune. Very good rune for starting off. Definitely a good thing to be had there. Now the question is, which of these two teams are going to draw first blood? That all-important, very expensive first blood. Over in Twitch chat, Kulisora, uh, Kul Kulsoria is saying that uh, Viller is winning. So, uh, hey, we have yet to know. Yeah, the game has not quite started yet, so it's hard not quite. to say. Dazmig rocking that immortal sniper gun right there. Very good stuff. He took a level and headshot first. Very good choice for him there. I actually have not gotten to see the immortal weapon in action. We could have a bad spot here. Uh, Sosterpone finding himself on the bad end of a earth shaker fist courtesy of NP. One auto attack is not going to be enough to seal that fate though. They're going to back off from that one. Bristleback's going to trade a few hits with a, um, with Too Sexy here. Yes. It's going to come out a little ahead. Bristleback just kind of walking away, not doing much of nothing. But that is okay. Fiesta looking to get a little bit of damage. Fiesta dipping down to 345 health after taking exchanges from Dazmig. Dazmig still has both of his tangos, his sav, he's got his, uh, his wraith band, so he's already set up pretty hard. Back on bottom lane, not so sexy, trying to get into good positioning for Soster Ponage. Does not happen. It looks like uh, BK is going to move around to get this haste rune. They might try to get a kill with this. Ooh, Shadow, Shadow Shaman, Shaman, too sexy, picking up that haste rune. Not doing much. May try to regroup over in mid for the gank. Jasmine like is hanging back. Make an attempt at the, at the Naga Siren, but... She's gonna. She's got good positioning right oh now. Oh my goodness! So, what a throw right there. Too sexy though. Dipping so far down, he has got himself 131 HP. Naga Siren will not be able to seal it. It looks like a little bit of miscommunication there, as Dazmig was not able to get in position in time to start hitting on that Naga Siren. You know, I do like my fish people, but uh, not that much. Meanwhile, back on bottom lane, Sostrapone dipping down. Not so sexy to 267 health. He will pop the tango, and will start going back into healthy territory. The DD rune top now. Not so sexy really needs to pick up uh, uh, a magic stick like now so he can just tank with the um, bristles thrown out. He's got boatloads of money right now. 819 in the bank. I wonder if he's going bought. fast Midas. He might very well be. It's he's really gonna need to um, keep his farm up if he wants to keep up with the uh, faceless void. Faceless void will take off in the um, the very late game. He is still running the roost as far as last hits go. He does have 12 last hits to and two denies to snipers 11 and 10. So while sniper may be doing better all around, faceless void does have more in pocket. Naga will pick up that double damage rune. Fiesta looking to start a party over here in mid lane. We'll pop back in, get something, get her bottle from the courier. Oh yeah, she's ready. She is ready to start going in on this sniper. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. I think we're going to see a carry Naga, at least for the mid game. It, it's sort of interesting. I think we were a little off when we, we called their lanes. I mean, we've got the solo off lane Bristleback, which, you know, is pretty fair. We've got the, the mid Naga, which we were calling that she hold would be a phone, support. Hold the phone, bottom lane, some bad stuff's going down on Sostrapone. An excellent Fisher by Earthshaker will put Sostrapone in a bad yeah. spot. Too sexy, following with the body block. This could be it right here. This could be the first blood. Sostrapone's so close to being dead. Oh, Naga Siren comes in with the haste rune. Fisher on her. First blood will go to not so sexy. We could see a second blood here. Nope, we will see a kill on Too Sexy. Fiesta picking that one up. Definitely good stuff right there. She could hunt out a second double kill right here. She got it, the double kill. Fiesta picking up a huge double kill. That may have been a big first blood, but Mid just got two kills in her pocket. That was a really clutch haste rune pickup. I mean, she would not have been able to track down the Slardar like she did if she hadn't had it. 
and just very clutch. She's already sitting at, uh, even though she went out of lane, she's still sitting at level 6 because of that engagement. Yeah, and she, let's face it, she wasn't doing too much against the sniper. Uh, she sort of had to passively farm because his ranged advantage. So this is really going to put her back on the map. Sniper is doing a lot better in lane with in the last hits department. He's got 25 and 18 denies. 18. That's kind of insane. He's been doing a good job keeping her starved of creeps. However, she did just net herself two kills, and that's better than creeps any day of the week. Bottom lane, Soster Pone getting frisky with not so sexy. Too sexy coming up with the assist. Going to pop him back into place. Both teams will disengage on that one. Yeah, Naga currently ahead in lane because of those kills. She's a whole level up now. And with her bottle dominance and her rune dominance that she's had, she is making sure she stays ahead. Naga Siren picking up another DD rune. This will be her second one of the game. Back up top, though, uh... Aja Threer is gonna, getting himself more and more last hits as the games go on. He is still neck and neck. 30 last hits, now 31. He is now ahead of Sniper. They have tied back themselves again. Sniper finished his Midas, and he's using his ult to harass Naga. It's not doing a whole lot, to be quite honest. She's got Bottle, so she has Regen. She's got Tango, so she's got Regen. She's good to go. Yeah, she's she's in a really good position. Really the great thing about Naga in this matchup is that she can easily push the lane with her Riptide and just uh, whenever uh, Rune's about to spawn she could push the lane, force it onto Sniper's tower so he has to either uh, take a bunch of damage on his tower or um, if he wants to get the Rune or he has to defend it and just let Naga get it for free. Mm -hmm. but At I this don't point like though she has song. At this point, though, she has Song. There's no contesting her for Rune. Like, she will just sing you to sleep and walk up to it and beat you every time. I don't think she's going to waste her Song on getting a Rune. Well, maybe not. Depends on what the Rune is. Nice double dose of random chance right there as Dasmid gets two headshots in a row on Naga. Meanwhile, up top, or excuse me, top river, we have a possible gank coming out from Captain Flint and Crytek loves lists. Very good rotation, and they even put a sentry down to try and deward the non-existent Radiant Ward. It's okay, Jenkins. Agitor okay. just picked up his uh, hand of Midas, so he's kind of sitting pretty on farm. Invisibility room being pinged out by Flint. Flint knows. They're gonna have a big regroup. Which doctor's gonna go invisible? Some bad juju right there. There's a whole lot of bad news swinging down. They know they're missing top, so they had a rotation mid. They're not sure where they're at. This is really bad. They moved one of their supports off bottom to mid. <laughs> there is so much damage coming this way. Honestly, they, they know Naga, they're around. Uh, if Naga mans up and alts in there, they could probably catch him and just kill him. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they know that they're there. Or if no, they, they do know, they don't want to risk it. Not so sexy and too sexy. Hanging back behind the tower trees. Definitely good positioning right there. So they are doing a great job of keeping themselves safe from that huge four-man rotation that just happened. Yeah, that was a lot of wasted time because they didn't want to dive the trees and, and not get anything for their trouble. Uh, we see that Shadow Shaman's drawing out in the, uh, not where uh, spectators can see, but he drew right here. He was marking out where he thought they were, that they were waiting here. Um, and now he's going to go check. Slardar has actually opted to rush a Blink Dagger before any other item. Hmm. Not sure how I feel about that. I don't the feel... Blink Crush is really strong, so... <clears throat> it's a very strong tactic, and that's why I don't feel as bad as, say, Logs does about it. Looks like Naga trying to disjoint the, uh... Assassinate by using her illusions. Not for you. Very well done. I Five think she's trying to get a little bit off. of safe farm while 
you know, sort of trying to force a uh, sniper out of lane at the same time. True, and I think it worked a little. She managed to back him off. She didn't lose too much, but she's out of region right now. Like, she needs something. And uh, she's going to miss the, the rune. I, didn't they just grab that rune? That was yeah, the that illusion Earthshaker rune. just picked it up. It was a haste rune. Ah, in that case, Bristleback's in a lot of trouble here. Oh, we've got Chicken Pwn, Chicken Pwn, gone, gone, gone. Not so sexy will pick himself up a kill courtesy of a really fast ape man. Meanwhile, Sniper up in mid lane will pick himself up a Naga Siren. Big fish, big, big fish. Big dead in mid lane. It is now 10 minutes. We're going to switch over from last hits over to our net worth lines. And let's take a look at the gold and XP crest right now. Bot killers, 750 gold advantage. XP, though, 2,000 advantage for bot killers. So bot killer is clearly in control of this match right now. But as you know, this is early game, so it could all get turned onto a head at a moment's notice. Smoke gate coming from Captain Flink and Crytek. Yep, they're rotating mid on the sniper. He's pushing out. Up, oh, up. Oh, this spot. was a mistake. He's in a spot. This could be bad. Oh, Unfortunately, and... Bristleback doesn't have his goo, so they can't they can't lock him down. Oh, and they will pop themselves a Dazmig. Dazmig is in a bad, bad spot. He's still protected by Marana's ult, and he will get away, though. So some quick thinking from Marana will save that sniper to fight another day. I'm surprised they didn't bring wards with them. That's, uh, that's kind of a huge oversight. It's like, oh yeah, Marana, she does that thing. Well, it really doesn't matter, because at this point, Too Sexy is pushing himself down a tower. Shadow Shaman got level 6 when we weren't looking, and now we've got a tower down in bottom lane. So even though V-Squad uh, may have had less deaths, or excuse me, less kills, they're actually losing a lot more. My bad. Regen rune being pinged out. Fiesta's gonna grab it. No, not so sexy. We'll blink out of the trees and deny yet another rune to Fiesta. That was a really good play. I'm not sure it, you know, validates blink dagger first as a purchase, but it's still a really good use of it. Honestly, he hasn't gotten punished for it, so it's going to pay off for him. Yeah, it's paying off as the game goes further and further. Dazmig now has his uh, his passive that lets him shoot from outside of the tower range. That's going to make him a great pusher along with Shadow Shaman's wards. And once Too Sexy gets his ult off in 35 seconds, we're going to see another tower go down as well because they can just wail on it all day long with impunity. A little He's surprised that Naga Siren opted to go for a Hannah Midas instead of just rushing into the Radiance. Yeah, that, I'm not sure, is a very good item for her. Um, a little bit of attack speed, some late game gold. It definitely feels like it's a little oh, too late. Oh dear. Oh, not so sexy. Getting frisky with Fiesta. Fiesta will go down thanks to Earthshaker. Huge three-man attempt on her life right there. They came off of it successful. Not so sexy. Uh, too sexy and and Pedasmic in the background. They are gonna do. A, they are gonna. Oh my God! Second kill right there. Captain Flint goes down. Not so sexy. Huge blink smash. Sniper will get the last hit on that one. They will get a tower for it too, and a two to one or a two for none with tower. That was a pretty big turnover, not to give anything else back. And I don't want to say I told you so about the hand of Midas on the Naga, but... Go ahead, Matt. I don't let you have many things, so go ahead. <gasps> I told you so. <sighs> that felt so good. Really, the only thing that could have helped her out there was getting early treads. And honestly, they had so much damage there that it really wouldn't have gotten her out of it. Yeah, and she had TP support that started coming in, wisely cancelled off when they realized that she was dead. Um, just everything played against her, and the BK sort of ganking lineup really came to bear there with the Shadow Shaman, the initiation from Earthshaker, the blink stun follow-up from Slardar. Just, just a perfect set of stuns so that they could get their whole team on top of her and just, you know, destroy her. Now let's take a look once again at the gold graph after that huge exchange.
They are now 4,000 bot killers in the lead for that gold. XP, almost the same thing, just under 4k XP difference. We're gonna see a invisibility rune picked up by Sniper. That's scary. He's like, nah, I don't need a Shadow Blade. I'll just take an Invis rune. Also, I'd like to bring to attention that Sniper is now back ahead of Naga Siren. She had taken the lead early because of those two kills, but now Sniper's back in the lead ahead as far as levels are concerned. He's got level 11, so the second level of Assassinate, and that kill got him his Yasha, so his attack speed is really starting to pick up. Sniper just waiting, biding his time, just waiting, smash, blink, oh, what a gank coming out on Sosterpone, not so sexy, getting the crush off, and he's gonna go down. A beautiful, well-timed, well-patiented attack. I don't think patient is a word, but I don't care, because that was sexy, but not too sexy. Uh -huh. No, I believe it was not so sexy. Ah, you're entitled to your opinion. No. <laughs> <laughs> guy's name. I, I'm aware. That's the joke. And we are going to see a tier 2 dipping down to 519 health. Crytek with the teleport in. Dazmig's going to get away before any kind of balls could get thrown. No glimpse from Disruptor. He would have had to been really quick on the draw to see that and get it clicked, but... He could have potentially gotten a very important sniper pick off if he had. Mm -hmm. I think they were trying to lead in with Witch Doctor Cask, and he just couldn't get there in time. But he did give the Disruptor vision. That's one of those things where you see a, a sniper walk off into the trees. You know he doesn't have any way out of there but teleport. Gotta nope. be thinking ahead. More push coming out from bot killers. Bot killers pushing down that tier one on top lane. This is the last tier one of the game. Fiesta eats a sacred arrow. Bristleback will deny the tower, but it's not going to be enough. They are going to be sad faced all the way to the not having money bank. Yeah, they've already lost all their tier one towers, so that's going to be pretty rough on them. And we're going to see a double kill bottom. Nice double kill right there with Sniper picking up Crytek and Captain Flint. Dazmig showing what for, then denying a tower to top it all off. Yeah, Witch Doctor couldn't even get his cask off. He got two locked up. And then Disruptor was trying to teleport out. And I think uh, a good headshot ended that. Mm hmm. It's important to note that uh, Sniper or Dazmig is currently sitting 4 and 0. Oh. Half of his team kills belong to Dazmig, and that is sad to the max. Shrapnel will go off, and they're going to start taking this tier 2 on bottom lane. There is no fortification they can do right now. There's just so much push coming out of bot killers. Oh, we've got a Maelstrom already done on Sniper. It's gross. It's really that gross. That's really huge. His pushing power now is really great. Oh, teleporting here to the side. Sniper trying to hide in the fog of war. Maybe hoping somebody will show up to try and push this top. And then if not, he can come out here and, and try and get a kill. Now over in Twitch chat, Kulsoria just said that that Naga should have gone Blink Dagger instead of Midas. What do you think about that, Logs? Blink dagger, huh? Uh, if she had been fast on the finger, maybe she sh could have gotten out. But once that Earthshaker stun I, landed, I think I can see what he's trying to say. Uh, use um, Naga mainly as an initiation tactic, so blink her in and alt. I guess is what he's trying to say. Possibly. Or alt and then blink. Well, it really doesn't matter. Well, yeah. Well, I guess against a sniper, it does matter because he can like. Lock her up at this point. I He's guess, almost I guess. enough attack speed. Not so He's... sexy. Leaving the charge on mid lane now, trying to push up to that tier two mid lane. We got trouble for whoever's pushing out top lane on Dire. We got four people amassing very, very soon. We got no, a we... third TPing in. We could see a big team fight happening here. The initiation on Agitator goes out. Or Agitator. Uh, getting hit by that Fisher. 
Mm, not sure what happened there. Chicken oh. man. Chicken man has happened. He has been grabbed. Nice thinking by Crytek. Liss, I think though. he was. Uh, I think he thought he had a little more damage. Oh not dear! Enough is not so sexy. Blinks in and just wrecks up the place. Desmond coming in to try to finish off Bristleback. Fiesta is in a bad spot now. The assassinate goes out on on a uh, Sosterpone. Fiesta now in a bad spot, trying to catch up with not so sexy. Not so sexy. Blinks out of the way. She will get. Her song off to get into position. Will oh, she didn't cancel it in time. She did not. She did not pick up BK. Oh, not so sexy. So sexy. Ah, uh, sniper dies to turret shots and disruptor. Dyer's top tower is under attack. That was very well played by Bot Killer. After that exchange, now 5K, just under 6K in uh, gold advantage same thing on XP right now net worth gross so gross sniper has a 10k net worth NP is gonna pick himself up regen rune generation give himself that nice deep voice regeneration oh my generation did you start singing a Captain Jack song <laughs> well if you won't I will <laughs> Faceless Void has finally got his Battle Fury up, and that's really going to be the only thing that can win them this game, is if Faceless Void gets insanely farmed. Yes. He's one of those heroes that can carry great if he's got insane farm. He's got the setup for it now. He's got the Midas, and he's got the Battle Fury. What All do you think about his choice to not go Aghanims, like, very soon? I mean, he's I, got a level I, too old. I think he would actually need to go Agnums very soon. Yeah, that, that really needs to be his next item, because his contribution is pretty much entirely his ultimate at this point. Um, and even then, he really needs to get Sniper trapped in it, or else he's not really going to be doing too much either. Exactly. And we're going to see the initiation come out from Marana. Oh, this oh, could be this a huge be bad. mistake. Oh, nice big... Blink slam. So much CC happened in there. Desmond's gonna walk with the last hit, but that was a complete team effort. Uh, he, they even had the Sentry Ward a little further back. I was thinking, oh, he'll just retreat and then he'll be okay. Oh no. Hey, how about we make those Naga illusions do something rather than stand there? Right. Oh, here gonna comes go the in for the initiation. They're gonna single out two. The Chronosphere comes up. He is gonna start wailing on Dazmig. And it's gonna be enough. They will take him out. Witch Doctor getting a nice double kill, taking out two sexy and NP. And after all was said and done, three fell to the V Squad. Really well done. Good to finally see those team fight ultimates come into play from everybody. To be honest, it was a little more chaotic than I had expected. I was kind of expecting the uh, the dubstep drop to just <laughs> happen, and then, you know, wah wah, uh, dur, 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 dur. but you know, one at a time. We'll see. You know, they got a mod for that. Yeah, we'll we'll do some electronica. We'll just add more layers. Yeah, just throw a savage over top of it. Oh, yeah. savage. Radiant's top tower has fallen. We'll see another turret go down. Top tower, excuse me, because I got yelled at by Schweggs because of that. We'll see a tower go down on top lane. So we've got a little bit of a reprieve on pressure for the V-Squad. Still, it's... What, if we consider towers, we're definitely nowhere near even. Yeah. If you... Hey, Actually, take a look at um the gold graph. There was a massive swing yeah. back in um back towards V Squad after that uh after that fight. Bristle Makes backs. sense though. Got Bristle a lot of in a bad spot here. Cause his, if if the Dazmig or anyone catches him before he gets a chance to, Flint will get called out though. Goes down like butter on a hot breakfast plate. Done with the double kill. Dazmig picks himself up. Liz as well. 
you'd think they would have seen that coming. I mean, they were scouting it pretty much with the Bristle, who had his lucky um, uh, you forget, invisibility sir. rune. You forget, sir, they were invisible because of Marana ult. That's true, but they have a sentry ward on the high ground almost right did. there. It got put up as Disruptor was going down. Oh. Well, very good. That was just really unfortunate timing. Yeah, they're then. going in for the initiation again. They are going in. They are going to be able to single out. Sister Pwn gets hit by an unfortunate arrow. The ulti from from Earthshaker goes out. Oh, she's not the ulti. The uh, oh, oh my gosh. I'm that completely was a really bad chronosphere. It trapped his uh, allies who were TPing in. Just and this is what down just in time to wait for Earthshaker to drop the echo slam on them. Yeah, they're all done. That that was it right there. They just suffered a humiliating five for one exchange during that. Yeah, that is the problem with not getting sniper in the chronosphere. He sat way back in the trees and got a triple kill with no problems. Just sitting there thinking to himself, you know what's good today? Triple kills. And He's and murdering people with my revolving gun. I actually really like the way it looks. Yeah, it's starting to grow on me, oh, honestly. Witch Doctor getting singled out right there, gets hit with a chicken stick. And ulting Boom. by Witch Doctor. Boom. Headshot. Nice assassinate there. I was waiting for it. I was like, please, please. Desmig, please. Desmig, please hit R. Win game forever. Well, he is 13 and 2 right now, so while he may have died twice, he has more than enough to make up for it. 6.5 yes, kills per death. That's a he's pretty all... good average. It he's got like his Mjolnir go... and Manta is in stash. Faceless Void is going to go right into a BKB, which um, is still necessary, but honestly, there's just so much physical damage coming out, I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, yeah, Sniper's next item will probably be something like an Eagle Song or maybe a Desolator, since they're getting ready to try and take another Rax. I was going to say break the high ground, but they didn't really have any issues with that. But I guess if we're trying to push before Sniper falls off, then Deso might be a way to go here. Deso would, uh, Deso would definitely work, yeah. Um, uh, I think it might be a bit much stacking in the minus armor, though. Uh, Monkey King Bar doesn't go through Faceless Void's evasion, does it? Because he... No, it does not. He, yeah, his is time-based, I say that again in air quotes. Well, so he no, just... um, the way Faceless Void's uh, ability works is he doesn't actually... If the attack does not miss, he just takes no damage from it. Very good. Now, as you can see right now, all of V-Squad has their entire mid lane just warded up with sentries galore. Yeah, and it didn't do a lot to help them, quite honestly. Like, they knew, or at least had some idea that bad stuff was coming their way, and it just it just wasn't enough. Waxpants over in uh, chat says, uh, GG Void on that particular setup he did. Big shot coming from Marana, picking up that kill on Captain Flint. Spanky, well done. Not so sexy now being singled out by Agitator. He will get... His, uh, no, he won't. He won't seal the deal. Then he will. Too sexy. He picked up a nice double on Crytek and Fiesta. Good objective driven Dodo. We've got lots of calls coming out here to go and push this tower down. Lots of frantic pinging. It's like, go ahead and take it. Well, they have no they have no choice at this point. Look at how much raw power mid is pushing Desmic in has. on its own as well. Desmid can hit from well behind the high ground. Yep, the tier fours are getting pushed right now by the the mega creeps. Pew. They're going to have not enough wow. to save himself from that assassinate. Desmid picks himself up another kill, fourteen to two now, seven kills per death. 
really well done. This tower also went to half health, and all of the buffer buildings are gone. The tier fours are taking damage now. Arrow goes out, nobody home. I think once uh, Slaughter finally rejoins them, they're going to move to uh, take these uh, final towers and win this game. That's right. And at this point, it seems like V Squad really needs to like either take a Roche or take a huge team fight in order to make it. And I am going to check real quick because I think uh, right now Sniper and uh, Earthshaker both have buyback. And we're going to see bot killers go for their Roshan kill. Roshan's going to go down so very fast. Marana also has her Manta and Adesso. Slardar picking up that Aegis of Immortality. Not so sexy, he's gonna live forever and not so sex for me. <laughs> looks, like, um, looks like Dasmig is gonna go for a Monkey King bar. There might still be a oh, Chrysalis. Oh, look for the circle but around. Monkey King bar. Oh, oh, Orange waited back to get the Courier. This could be huge. They didn't pick up the Courier, but the smoke is up. The fortification will go out. They the don't see it. set up. Oh, and a static cage comes off too. Up, oh, that's one dead sniper. No, it's not. No, it's not. A miscalculation is going to seal his fate. Desmig will go down in the fight, but he will pick himself up a double for it. Oh, and Disruptor Captain Flint getting away just in time. No, he will not. Captain Flint goes no. down too. A stun from NP. Not so sexy. Last hitting it up. That's going to be bottom tower, bottom racks. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a GG at this point. Wow, I, why did Sniper not go down there? Like, Void was just wailing on I'll him. I'll tell you why, I'll tell you exactly why. When the Chronosphere went off, Earthshaker wasn't in it. He threw out his Fissure. Wham, bam, no thank you for that, ma'am. Yeah, and that, also, that. Uh, they could have definitely killed him. Except uh, Naga took a little too long to turn off her uh, song. You're right, she did. Aegis has popped. Agator is in a bad spot. Not so sexy. Going to try to get him down. He will. Beast mode, sir. Slardar showing him what for. Not so sexy. Throwing off his ulti on Crytek. He gets, he gets netted by Naga. Glimpsed back. Not so sexy. He's in a real bad spot now. Not going to be enough to get out of there. He's got so much heart, but he just can't get out of there. Bristleback will end that not so sexy killing spree for an extra 478 gold. We got Refresher up on Shadow Shaman as well as Aghanim Scepter here. So he's going to have twice the push potential. And we've, we've got Disruptor trying to protect the tier 4s. He cannot tank Mega Creeps. Just cannot do it. No, he cannot. So, Two sexy is just gonna walk up in there and laugh at the mere mention of them defending their base. They'll see him walk up in the club. He will flirt. Did you see how long it took for them to take down that Slardar? It like, took quite a while. I mean, it was like what four people against him after he like manned up on Faceless Void. Just really, really powerful. And that was without, I don't know, any sort of evasion. That was just his pure armor. And he's about to have BKB done in about 900 gold. Gross. Gross fish man, to be sure. Yep, so we've got one set of top racks before Mega Mega Creeps. And I still got... say they should give those another name. Yeah, Super Creeps or Ultra Creeps, Super Ultra Mega Creeps. Supreme Creeps. Mega Mega Creeps, Supreme. Mega Squared Creeps. No, no. Double, double, double Mega Creeps? With cheese. Super Special Awesome Creeps. <laughs> Faceless Void trying to keep his base defended. Agator is in a... He, he he's got so much he got so much he can do he just really flubbed that that uh, that team fight that happened it wasn't all his fault you're right Naga Siren did take a little too long on that uh, Radiance Naga though it's Finally. not going to really help her but so much 
Honestly, PK. her illusions have no tank ability, so they're just getting picked apart by the sniper when he's well out of range of the radiance. Fight, yeah, sniper went to MKB out. too. He must not have heard us discussing how that doesn't go through Cr Faceless Void's illusion. The fight Earth. has broken out, sir. Yes, Agator is going to be the first one singled out. No, it will be. It will be Captain Flint who goes down first. The assassinate does not kill Sosterpone, but the blinking. Not so sexy not so does. Not so sexy does. That's going to be the Mega Creeps right there. The GG is called by Fiesta. They fought valiantly, the V Squad. They did as best they could, but it just was not enough to stop the ultra push that bot killers had. Remember, this is a best of two game. We're going to go to game two here momentarily. Make sure you tune in for that. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next game.